Now, another thing, this is not my discovery, but this is a remarkable thing. I mean, that's, you know, history of science helps you in a very funny way in here. This animal has just been found. It's been reported in Chinese Science Bulletin, 2009, September. There was in Nature a little report about that again, because they found another fossil of this. Now, this is Anchiornis Huxley. This is a dinosaur about that big. That big. And you can see that it is it's a tetrapteryx. That means it has four wings. It has wings on the arms, it has wings on the feet. And these wings are not imaginations of Shu and company. These are on the slab. You see them fossilized. Now, the interesting thing about that is that in 1927, an extremely unhappy and unfortunate paleontologist called Gerhard Heilmann, this unfortunate man, for some strange reason, had to live in Denmark. Now, you realize the oldest deposits in Denmark barely go beyond Paleocene. That means, you know, barely, they barely cross the boundary 65 million years, and most of it is quaternary. Most of it is about 2 million years old. And Gerhard Heilmann was a man who was interested in deposits that are 140, 150 million years old. None of that in Denmark. Not only that, of course, because these things didn't exist in Denmark, there are no veteran paleontologists in Denmark, and Gerhard Heilmann bitterly complains in the introduction of his book. He says, I'm so alone here, there is nobody to talk to. <laughs> Poor man. But... He published a book called The Origin, On the Origin of Birds. In 1927, he said, it's very clear that these animals came out, birds came out of reptiles. And he said, my God, they look like dinosaurs. But he looked at Archaeopteryx and he said, this animal is really too much of a bird to have hopped directly from dinosaurs or from any other reptile. He said, no, there had to be intermediary forms. So, he studied the wing structure of Archaeopteryx, and he said, what did Archaeopteryx do with these wings? He had claw Archaeopteryx had claws on the wings, and Heilmann said, this animal obviously wanted to climb trees, because that's one way you escape from your enemies, and the other way, you can see your prey, and you can glide from tree to tree, and while you're gliding, you can find your food. And if you happen to be on the ground, your wings give you a lot more area to catch succulent insects. And you can put them into your mouth. Yeah. So he said, well, if this was the function of these wings, let us imagine an animal that would be somewhere intermediary. And he called it Proavis. And he was bold enough, fortunately, to sketch his animal. Now, uh, Beebe, in 1915, already suspected that the birds had a tetrapteryx stage. That means a four-winged stage beforehand. And uh, he drew an animal, but that was not really carefully thought out. Whereas uh, this animal, Heilmann's animal, was built using stepwise evolutionary arguments. And the beautiful thing about that is, that animal is found in the year 2009. A prediction based on Darwinian model. And this is as good a prediction any bloody physicist can make. You know, the physicists think they smell differently under the armpits. They don't. <laughs> you know, I mean, we geologists are as good scientists as they are. And biologists. We can, we can make predictions like that. I dare any physicist to make as complicated a prediction. Uh, knowing Heilmann's great success in 1927 gives an immense confidence to you in your methods. And I can tell you when I heard the discovery of Ancheonis Huxley, I couldn't sleep all night. I mean, I was so excited, like a little child who was given a new toy.